Hey everyone, welcome to Building a Bitter Brand. I'm Brett Grimes with Robot House. We're a creative agency of designers and copywriters located in Oklahoma City. We're focused on building unique brands through a strategic process we call our blueprint process. We'll talk about that a little later. Um, we work with a variety of clients in many industries and we have a real passion, passion for packaging and craft beer. I'm here today with Kelly Moody and Dax Strickland of Bitter Sisters Brewing Company. They are one of our longest clients, uh, actually predating my start with Robot House. Um, Kelly and Dax, do you guys want to introduce yourselves and tell us just what Bitter Sisters is all about? I'm Kelly Moody, and um, I am one of the sisters of Bitter Sisters. Um, we are a family-owned uh, craft brewery that's located in Addison, Texas. Um, half of us live in Oklahoma and the other half of us live in Texas. And so we distribute to both states and we all family uh, owned work together to, um, to keep this brewery going. And I'm Dax Strickland. I'm married to the youngest bitter sister uh, and also the self-proclaimed least bitter sister, Carrie. Um, and like Kelly said, we're um, just a big family that likes beer and, and made a business out of it. And there we are. The eight opinions behind the brand. Eight opinions. So <laughs> what makes yeah, Robot House's job super fun? That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah. So we're sitting as couples there. And on the far left, you'll see uh, Kelly and her husband, Brent. Um, in the white shirt in the middle is Matt Ahinger, um, our brewmaster and, and kind of the man behind all this. And his wife, Courtney, another one of the sisters. Far right is myself and my wife, Carrie, and then um, the gray shirts to our left are the baby brother, Matt McHugh, and his wife, Melissa. You want to talk and about as stated, we, we uh, family owned, uh, we each kind of have a role to play, um, which has kind of worked well um, as long as we stay in the lane of our role, um, which sometimes is easy and um, sometimes not so, but that's kind of the way we started out. Everybody kind of engaged in the process. Um, Matt was obviously the, the lead uh, behind getting Br Bitter Sisters going. Um, he had a passion for um, being a craft brewer and, and of the eight of us in the photo was really the only one that knew how. So it made sense for him to be you know, in that role as production, um, the man behind the beard, so to say, uh, slash beer. And then my sister, his wife, is um, in the financial industry. And so she kind of is our um, keeping us on budget taskmaster. And uh, myself and Carrie and Dax all have degrees in creative marketing in some way. So we kind of stay in that lane. Um, and then my brother, Matt, and his wife, Melissa, they are kind of real estate, but they're also local there in Texas. And so they have each taken on roles with either social media, on-site um, marketing, um, and then special events. Has anyone else in the family dabbled in making beer yet other than, than Matt? Uh, <laughs> I think not I think, me. That's for sure. I think little brother Matt has done some brewing. I did in college once, and it didn't go well. So I'm I'm definitely in the right role for myself. <laughs> Again, the lanes are important. For sure. All right. So, what's the origin of the name Bitter Sisters? Okay, so I'll take that one. So uh, from the previous family photo, my brother is the youngest of my siblings. I'm the oldest and then two sisters after me and then Matt is the youngest. So for all weddings, my brother-in-law, Matt Ahinger, who is the um, established brewmaster of the family, he brewed specific beers for everybody's wedding um, that was served at the wedding. And we usually created some sort of artwork that went behind the particular styles of beer he created. And for my brother's wedding, um, 
he one of the beers that he brewed and named Matt Ahinger came up with the name um, was Bitter Sisters. I think it was an IPA. Um, Dax and I couldn't clearly remember, but it made sense that it was an IPA. And so Carrie and I kind of hand drew a logo that had the image of the three of us, the sisters behind the youngest sibling brother, um, kind of taking a slow time buying into the new sister in the family process. So the other beers that, you know, he came up with one, I think was a um, hotter than Hellas uh, because their wedding was in August in the state of Texas, which completely made sense that it was hotter than Hellas. And the other one was McHugh Irish Red. And so our family name is McHugh, which is Irish. And so we made the Irish Red. Those recipes are probably pretty close to some of our current recipes. And later on, you'll see the names of those beers, but you know, they kind of stuck. As did the name Bitter Sisters. That's right. So how did the brewery start after that? Um, so like Kelly mentioned, Matt has brewed for a, a very long time. He started brewing um, in college days. He was the head brewer for a, a local brewery in Norman, Oklahoma, um, coaches. Uh, so he has lots of experience, both with his own brewing system at home, creating his own recipes. And he also had good experience brewing um, kind of at a production level as well. Uh, he has a degree in engineering. He, he worked in engineering for years and years, but, um, you know, wanted to go into business for himself, always had a passion for, for beer and for brewing. We've always been supportive of him brewing. Obviously, um, you know, we're, we're serving these beers at our weddings. Every time we go visit them, uh, we're, we're drinking these beers and we all knew they were great. They, they were good beers that, that we, as a small family or big family uh, and friends um, had always kind of told Matt, you know, you should, you should do this full time. Uh, it's, it's great. And one day, uh, you know, we, we talked about it at events. The family always acted like they would be interested. One day we got a call from Matt and he said, I'm ready to do it. Um, and the rest is history. Um, the family invested. We all kind of, assumed our roles. Uh, like Kelly said, we kind of found our lanes and, and that didn't all happen immediately. That's a lot of that's happened over time. Uh, we've learned to kind of stay out of each other's ways. Um, but, you know, it's really just a product of, of Matt having a passion and a talent. Um, and it kind of aligned with his education and, and background and it's it's turned into something great. And believe it or not, we all we all kind of have other jobs as well. Yeah. Um, so sometimes it's been tough to make it to festivals or to work, you know, nine to five or some of us sell homes or, um, you know, we, or work from home or, we, and we all have children. So it's been tough to kind of find balance, but um, several years in, I, I believe, we have everybody seems real cohesive and happy and excited and still very engaged, uh, which I think is a big success. So e even with our uh, forced 18 month slowdown um, from a couple years back, I feel like, you know, things have kind of returned mostly to normal and we're starting to see growth trajectory that, you know, we had planned anyway. So it's a very exciting time. So when you started out and you were getting this process of getting the brewery up and going, uh, can you tell us about your process of finding a, a branding partner and kind of how that went down? Uh, well, so Dax and myself and our spouses, we all live in Oklahoma and everybody else, as mentioned prior, live in Texas where the brewery is located. Since we were kind of the creative um threesome. My husband's a dentist and so doesn't claim creativity at all, but we use him for a swing boat when we need it. Um, but we're kind of the creative branding, logo, labels. Um, you know, we kind of, that's our lane. And so we felt like finding a creative 
um, business company, Creative House, located in Oklahoma was important. Um, and so asking others that, that we were familiar with that are in um, business for themselves or even some in the food and beverage industry, who they used and what success they had had. Uh, Robot House name was handed to me. And so we set a meeting and met with Brian, who Brian and I discovered then that we also had a church connection. Um, And I felt like in that initial meeting, there was some immediate comfort. Um, I felt like that Brian understood, you know, what we needed. Brian also understood that we were just starting out. And so we really, but we're budget conscious. He listened to everything that he said. And, um, you know, since then, I, I, I still feel that way. So to find somebody that, that takes everything that you say, absorbs it, um, and then brings you something that you get really excited about, it is a, you know, is a big success. And it's, it's been a really good relationship for us. Awesome. Yeah, definitely, definitely part of the process. And for everyone out there, Brian Winkler is the founder of Robot House. And then Dax, I think we have some early sketches here of some logos. Yeah, hang on to this. This may be worth some money someday. Um, <laughs> so, you know, when we when we talk about kind of finding our logo, that was really um, the, the first delivery from Robot House to us. And to kick off that process, um, you know, Brian Robot House gave us uh, questionnaires. There were eight of us involved, and we all kind of went through that and filled out what you know what we thought of as far as our brand goes. We had a name, but that's really a, and we had beer, but that's really all we had. Um, and so we we gave some ideas. We all had different elements that we thought were you know important to include, um, and you know I would sit around and and sketch and draw different things. And clearly on the screen here, you can see it went a lot of different directions. Um, And I think you've got some slides that kind of show where Brian and team took what we presented and started to give us options. Um, These are some where there's some tanks that matched kind of that third drawing that I'd provided before. We had elements of stars, which someone on their questionnaire had said, you know, they thought was a good element to include some hops and and wheat, um, different things and different fonts. Uh, This is kind of where the process took us. Um, I think the next slide has kind of a different um, look as well. So, you know, some of the guidance we had, we liked a circular logo. Um, We liked to to bring things in. you know, we had we had some ideas, but we couldn't really say specifically exactly what we wanted. Um, as these were presented to us, some people liked certain things, others liked other things. Um, and what I think Brian and, and you guys did a great job of doing is recognizing where we might be stepping over each other, where we might be conflicted. Um, and I think the next slide is is where we got. Um, kind of more or less where we were headed. Uh, A hand-drawn version of Bitter Sisters. And you'll notice uh, it's pretty obvious all the other elements came out. There's no hops, there's no wheat or barley, there's no stars, Mm -hmm. there's no tank. It's simple, it's it's hand-drawn, it's a little rough, um, which that's kind of us. Um, And it was really a great process. and, And I think what was really cool about it is how patient Robot House was with us eight of us, you know, with opinions and strong ones at that, with the name Bitter Sisters, you can only imagine um, how some of the conversations go. But this, all of a sudden, we, we we were all aligned with something. I feel like, and I told Dax this, it, sometimes when we walked into meetings at Robot House, it was like we, br- we brought in a bucket of ping pong balls and just dumped them all over the table. <laughs> And it was Brian and team's job to figure out where the ping pong balls were going to fit. And it really kind of equated to there were eight of us, you know, giving a very strong voice to what we felt like um, our logo needed to tell people about us. And what we ended up with is something all eight of us um, feel like says that. Yeah. 
And since then, we've kind of refined, you've taken that process and kind of refined it just a little bit. Um, but it's definitely still collaborative and all about that conversation and kind of whittling down to the, to the final design. Um, but like I said, we just streamlined it and that's the blueprint process I mentioned earlier. Um, but it kind of alleviates any bad surprises along the way because we only want good surprises with clients. So we can still, you know, take those ping pong balls, like you said, and put them where you want, hopefully deliver them back in a way where it's like, ah, yes, okay, this makes sense now. All right, so the first, the, the core line of beers here, you mentioned these earlier. So uh, the way that these kind of came, came to be is, and I think that one of the most difficult things about this creative process of, of, of brewery owning is coming up with a name that matches to a different style of beer. I mean, obviously, outside of getting your actual logo um, created, it's this naming of the beers. And especially when you've got eight people, one about what his beer um, should, how should, how it should be verbally translated, then the, the eight of us have opinions as well. Then finding a name that you absolutely love that isn't trademarked, because that's also become a challenge. So we could go through two hours of brainstorming and, you know, all of our, you know, number one choices are trademarked. So we come to Robot House with a brainstorm list of beer names and basically the ping pong ball bucket again gets dumped onto the table. These are names we're thinking of and, you know, they somehow make sense of some shining stars in that pile of balls and, out comes this um, very cohesive line of beers. And this is our initial core. We now have added one to this um, annual lineup um, that I think also fits very well. Um, but anyway, these were the first four. Yeah, one thing I'll, I'll say on these, I think um, when we brainstormed names initially, we gave Brian a long list of, of ideas that we had. Um, these weren't all in that list. And, and Brian kind of took, once we'd gotten past the logo, he, he took the name idea and put together a couple different options. And they were like families of uh, similar type names. And these were kind of the compound word list. Um, and it's kind of expanded from that. But you'll see that every, every beer we have is really a two, two word. So, um, he came up with the names. We really liked this set, the Busy Body, Cat Fight, Hissy Fit, Knockout. And then he went to work on that first poster, and it's the Busy Body Blonde. Um, we didn't really have any guidance there. Uh, Brian brought that back to us, and I don't think we changed a single thing. Everyone loved it. The look was great. It was exactly what we were looking for. Um, we could see it as a poster. We could see how this could someday translate to a can, which that happened years down the road. Uh, and from there, he, you know, it developed these others. We worked on colors for those. We've maybe changed out a little icon or image here and there from time to time. But the creative writing, um, the look and everything has always stayed consistent. Um, and I think it's you know, like you said, it's a collaboration, Brett. I, sometimes we'll have an idea, but we can't really complete it. Or sometimes you guys will have the, the whole idea for us and give it to us. Um, it's really been a great partnership. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, and I think over time, as we've added beers to the line beyond this, we've done a good job of keeping that um, just just the, 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 excuse me, the design system of how these all work and connect. So you know, each of them still feels like a Bitter Sisters beer, no matter if the background color changes or the fun, crazy typography that makes up the name changes or the little icon. Um, but they also feel like they're part of that line. And, and that was one of the fun things about working on this project. And a um, little extra thing we snuck in there, and this translates, especially when we go to the can lineup, was how we can uh, make these almost feel like there is a glass of beer there with the core color being, you know, the beer and the little foam up top kind of popping out from behind that logo. And when we transitioned these from those posters to the cans, it was kind of interesting because those posters, I'll flip back to them real quick, 
have a lot of like grunge effects and textures going on and things that wouldn't quite translate. So we had to kind of scale them down and find a way to still do that in a kind of cleaner version um, that's still for representative of the brand and, and no one would get lost going from a tap room to the store to buy this. I think they turned out pretty great. Well, yeah. and they look really good and stand out really well on a shelf next to each other, which is another very um, important thing, you know, when you're when you're marketing a product like this is to have point of purchase recognizability. And these really do complement each other next, you know, on a shelf. Absolutely. And then we can get to one of our favorites that everyone loves. <laughs> and was just a blast to design. Uh, yeah, can you guys kind of tell us the origin of this? Can you just talk a little bit about Winterbush? Uh, so Matt, uh, our brother in beers, um, that's probably second um, to his love of hoppy beers, I would say, and always wanted to brew a stout, an imperial stout. Um, he has a he has um, an Irish red, which is our darkest year round beer. But now we have these um, really rich flavored, um, caramely tasting beers. And so I think the name for this um, was conceptualized around a table post holiday meal, potentially, and playing of some game um, and several beers. And this was the, the this was the beer style that was pitched to the group for we need a name for this, and I'm, here we are. <laughs> <laughs> and all we had to do was float this one to the robot house team, and and it came out to be probably one of our um, most popular uh, and most requested, though it is only brewed seasonally. Um, it's, it's, you know, it's memorable. Yeah. There's a couple different elements that are on each of our cans and posters and you've got, um, you know, obviously the name, you've got a little icon. And I remember when we, uh, looked at this for the first time and saw the upside down Christmas tree. Uh, I think I was in tears, uh, laughing so hard. Um, and currently and then... hanging in the brewery from the ceiling above the bar is an upside down Christmas tree. That's right. Um, but you know, there's copy also, uh, there's always a, a fun little uh, bit of copy on the back of the can um, with some some great little lines and then kind of a single tagline for the beer as well. And I, I don't know if you can see it or not here on the presentation, but the winter bush says uh, a beer you can beat around. So just some really fun, creative things. My wife cringes when she sees this one. Um, but it's always fun to talk about. Gets a lot of laughs, and people love the beer as well. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I think we fell on the floor when you guys sent us this name. <laughs> we were we were shocked, and it was hilarious. And I I can actually take credit for the upside down Christmas tree. So <laughs> you guys like that? I was like, yeah, it just has to be that, right? Well, it just had to be. <laughs> like, none of the rest of us at this point could imagine it any other way. All right, what's next? So I feel like, um, you know, we're in a really good place to start projecting some, you know, really good growth. Like I said, you know, the whole forced um, slowdown over the last 18 months and now um, kind of getting your feet back on the ground gave us some time to reorganize a little bit, make some plans in the actual brewery, put in a canning line. Um, so I think we're all very excited about what's next for us. Festivals have started back up, um, which is, you know, those are some of my favorite things to do because you get to actually talk to people um, about your product and you get a lot of really good feedback. So we do a lot of those. Currently, we um, distribute to Oklahoma and Texas, but I could see us, um, you know, expanding into some new um, and more states in the future, uh, getting people, you know, to come and help uh, has also been kind of a little bit of a slower um, recovery since two years ago. 
So it's going to take a little bit of that plus um, getting us, you know, all everything reopened and restaurants, new restaurants are opening all the time now, which is very exciting as well. So I, I mean, I just think moving forward, growing, we are planning to make a little bit of updates to some of this branding, which Brett can kind of elaborate on a little bit, um, which I think is also necessary. Um, it's time to grow up a little bit and um, professionalize. And that to me translates a little bit into a new website design. So Dax, do you have anything? No, I think um, you, you kind of hit most of the, the big items. We're, we're looking to can more beers, um, have more of a consistent release schedule. Uh, we've got we have quite a few beers that we've brewed and, and served in in our tasting room um, where it's a draft and maybe crawlers to go, but we want to get that in front of more people. And so um, really just looking to do that, get things out um, in package on the shelves, uh, continue to grow and, and really build and rebuild our brand in Oklahoma and Texas, the two markets that we we sell in today. Um, and then, like you said, you know, we're partnering with Robot House and we've kind of started the process on a new website, um, you know, looking to maybe expand how we sell merchandise from not just in the brewery itself to getting online sales, expand any on that. Yeah, just, just we are in the beginning stages of talking about a website. Um, and really, I think one of the most important things from our perspective is just really telling your story and just getting it the, all the colors on there and getting all the beers on there and just really making it feel like a fully branded destination. I agree. I think the way that this relationship between us and Robot House has developed over the last, well, since 2014, um, seven plus years, eight years, um, it's, it's, it's a very cohesive very comfortable and Dax elaborated, you know, um, early on when we saw the first uh, beer style poster design, we didn't really change anything. And it, and it's, it's gotten to that point where I feel like they know us so well um, and they know the direction we want to head in almost sometimes before we do, which is great. Um, that it's like working with your friends and, um, so much so that, you know, they understand us and, and we understand them. And, and so it's, it's really been a, a great partnership, in my opinion. Yeah, us too. I mean, for sure. Definitely. I think, you know, relationships are the most important things when it comes to this business. Um, what other elements uh, would you consider essential for finding the right creative relationship or creative partner? Oh, well, I, well, patience is is huge, at least with us, um, because like I said, the, you know, the ping pong ball process and that can be a little frustrating, um, probably from the creative end of it and making sense or uh, if not verbalized well or if um, if we don't verbalize our thoughts well, um, mind reading is also, you know, a little bit of a game. So. We, um, I think, somebody that um, that you can, um, that understands the direction that you're headed in and can turn around and translate it digitally and creatively um, is, is essential. And that also um, communicates throughout the whole process while um, ideas are being conceptualized so that you know where you are on a timeline, so that you know where you are on a budget, um, and everybody respects those things is, is another essential piece of that puzzle for me. Yeah, and I think another thing that, that we depend on is, you know, we, we're a, a family, um, we have other jobs. What's helpful for us is, is when you guys come to us with other ideas, maybe that we haven't thought of ourselves, um, ways to brand ourselves, things that we can put this logo on, um, displays and things like that. Um, you know, what the, what's happening in the industry and, and things like that. So I think that um, really number one, which Kelly hit on is communication um, and, and, and patience and, you know, getting feedback and, and taking that and building off of it. Um, but, but also just really helping guide and steer as well. Yeah. 
And I think the patience definitely goes both ways because it takes a while for, you know, when you're starting a creative partnership to kind of understand each other and, and kind of know uh, kind of each other's personality and, and just figure out that brand so it can really kind of come to life. And sometimes, you know, just listening when you maybe feel like all we need to do is talk something through um, is helpful. And sometimes, you know, an idea, a great idea comes out of a, a little um, casual conversation. So after Absolutely several agree. beers, usually. <laughs> that always helps. <laughs> well, cheers, everyone. Does anyone have any last words or anything else to say? I, I, I wish we were all sitting somewhere enjoying a beer together. That's right. <laughs> Maybe soon. All right, so where can everyone find Bitter Sisters? Brewery is in Addison, Texas, um, which is a little bit north of downtown Dallas. Um, and we have a tasting room and then a brew house in the back. Um, we give tours, we hold private events. Um, our tasting room is open um, many days a week and sometimes, um, I mean, always on the weekend. And then we have um, special anniversary parties. We have a big OU Texas party. We have 4th of July party. So uh, our website and soon the new improved website will uh, have a calendar of events and things like that. And then, like I said, we distribute in and off uh, premise, on premise and off premise in Oklahoma and Texas, mainly Oklahoma City, Tulsa, Lawton in Oklahoma. Um, but you can find us in, you know, a lot of different places too, Piedmont, smaller towns. And then in Texas, um, centralized really Dallas and North Dallas. But, you know, we have distributors in both states. And so we're also down in Houston and San Antonio and Austin. Very cool. And you can find Robot House at robot.house. Um, there's no dot com, it's robot.house. Thank you guys for watching. Had a great time. Cheers. Thanks. Cheers. Appreciate it.